Hello, and welcome to the webcast, MSP's Guide to Analytical Sales and Marketing, sponsored by Pulseway. I'm Tracy Cook with Redmond Channel Partner, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Before we begin, let me take care of a few housekeeping details. Please feel free to type your question into the Ask a Question box on the console at any time during the presentation. We'll address as many of your questions as we can during the live event today. The entire webcast is being recorded and will be archived for future viewing, and we'll send you an email when the replay is available, and that should be in approximately 24 to 48 <coughs> hours, and you can access the replay using the same link you used today. And now I'd like to introduce our speaker, Edgar Zakharov, Head of Marketing and Sales Optimization. Optimization at Polkway. Edgar is a digital marketing and sales optimization enthusiast with a love for data. He has worked with some of the biggest brands on results-driven digital marketing campaigns and conversion improvement initiatives. So it's my great pleasure to welcome Edgar. Edgar, please take it away. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, it's nice to uh, virtually meet everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining. I hope... Everyone can see the uh, the slides, the presentation, and can hear me clearly. If not, uh, just raise your hand and tell us, and we'll be able to sort that out for you. So, as the introduction, I work for Pulseway, uh, which is an RMM solution, an IT management solution for system administrators and MSBs. Uh, it's a mobile-first software that was launched about seven years ago seven year seven years ago we launched it and so we've been on the market now we're serving over four and a half thousand msps around the world with a mobile first solution now what makes us be able to give this presentation to you guys so since the seven years about seven years ago is that we started we started in a small office uh, we've been able to grow the solution to have over 300,000 users, over a million app downloads across all app stores, and have 4,500 MSP partners around the world. Um, it's been an exciting journey. We've learned a lot from working with a lot of these MSPs and also from our own end in tr driving leads and working with conversion statistics. Okay, so this is a quick agenda of what we're going to be covering today. Uh, so we're going to identify the audience. We're going to use the power of data, and we're going to use the processes. I like to call it the processes, basically measuring, tracking, and analyzing and tweaking constantly uh, to optimize every single sales conversion and each single marketing campaign. Uh, in terms of lead generation, uh, we're going to look at marketing backbone, which is building your reputation, uh, your website, optimizing your AdWords, retargeting and remarketing, closing the loop, SEO 101, tracking and automated outbound. And at the end, we're going to have a quick Q&A, so feel free to save your questions. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, so we'll kick it off with quickly identifying your audience. Now, why this is important is because you might have a number of customers, but there's a, a certain amount of customers you, you fit perfectly like a glove. So finding out the exact match to that customer is gonna help you identify uh, perfect audience targets and optimizing your sales process to, to fit the right message to that audience. So, um, you, so from our perspective, sometimes we get leads from a, from a number of companies, but there's each segment of, and each size of the company has a different conversion rate. And each, each of those companies will have a different process enabled for it to help convert for that particular audience. So on the audience, what we want to do is figure out who we can sell to best. Who do we convert the best? What size company? Focus on the audience, relate your message to relate to them. As a car salesman selling a convertible to a family with two born new, new kids, that's not going to work. Same way with your services that you're offering. The specific company that is in demand for your service and you need to filter down to what they want to hear and the what can they relate to. So that includes knowing what is the ideal size of the company that you work for. 
What is the industry that you focus on? What is the pain points that they come to you with? This could be having a conversation with your customer or your client and figuring out why is it that they were looking for, why did I have a problem? What problem did you manage to solve for them? Uh, and what job were you dealing with? What job type were you dealing with within the company? What decision makers were in that? Because all of them need a different message. They all, you need to convey a different, uh, different selling point to each of these decision makers. Once we figure that out, we can really tailor our messaging and we can tailor our process. Whether that's a call conversation I'll have with you, because if I call you and you're a big baseball fan and I'm talking to you about basketball for a reason, that's not going to relate to you. You need to know what your what your love is and you portray that message. It's the same way of selling your services to your potential prospects. We'll get into data now. The power of data. You know, in my opinion, I've been working in this for about seven, eight years in this industry, um, and data has been the crucial driver to to grow in our business uh, and helping other MSPs to grow their business by analyzing what you're currently doing, by tracking what what you're currently doing. You can improve on that. Data-driven businesses decisions make or break MSPs. If you really want to grow, by by shifting decisions based on data, you're, you're not making a guess or an educated guess. You're making a data-driven decision, which in more cases, the most is the correct decision. You have something to back this up with. Something as small as tweaking a call script or even a follow-up email can help you yield better conversions and marketing programs. By just changing a messaging, but even changing a, an example, by even changing the color of your call to action button on your website from blue to green, you can improve the click-through rate on that by three, four percent. Now, depending how much traffic you get, it, it's it's a substantial amount of of change just by doing a small tweak within your organization. I'll give you a real-life example. For example, your average customer contract is worth ten thousand dollars per month. This is just an example. You have a sales process in place that converts your potential prospects into customers at 10%. Your, mar your marketing programs bring, bring in 50 leads per month. By measuring and tweaking your sales process and improving your conversion rate from 10 to say 15%, it's a small tweak to change it up to improve by 5%, you can increase your NCA, which is your new customer acquisition revenue from 50,000 to 75,000 per month. Just based on a small tweak within your process, the yields results. More importantly, adjustment to generate more leads or convert better never, never needs to stop. So this is a process that never needs to stop. Just because you're doing extremely well doesn't mean it can't improve. Doesn't mean there's something you can't change to do even better. Within, either within it's your sales cycle or within your marketing programs. There's always tweaks and there's always improvements. A lot of companies take data for granted and they go on their gut feeling. I, I think we should do this or I think I should say this. But that's not measurable because you might have three or four salespeople and they might be saying three or four different things. So that, and how do you measure that? Like if everybody's doing a separate, separate approach, you can't track what's working and what's not working or why it's working or why it's not working because everybody's doing a completely different thing. It's not scalable in the long run. Uh, and it's, it's just an easy way out for the time being. So what, what is the process that I'm talking about? Uh, so when a lead comes in through your website asking more about what consultation you offer, or what services you offer, they fill in. So what, what is the normal approach? What do you do next? Do you simply pick up the phone and, and call and see what happens, have a conversation? Uh, what do you do after that based on the conversation? Uh, so this is where the process comes in. You should know, or your sales team should know exactly what they should do based on different types of leads that come in. Depends over the size of the lead. This depends the size of the company. That depends on the industry. Your salesperson should know exactly what to do from the get-go. They shouldn't be thinking about it. They should have a process in place where they can execute on immediately. So let's show you an example. I created a quick creek create a, a quick flow process here that will give you an example of a lead coming in. Now, it can get a lot more complicated. For example, from our end, it's a 
you know, 20 page document of ins and outs of customers uh, and customer types and decision making. So by looking at this, a prospect interested in your service comes in as a lead to your website. Is it a valuable lead? Does your sales team invest a lot of time into this lead or they pass it on and invest as little time as possible? Now, as you scale and you get more leads, it's really important to identify what is a valuable lead and what is not a valuable lead so that your sales team and your team can focus more uh, on valuable prospects. Questions such as, did the prospect fill their contact information correctly? Are the prospect's requirements feasible? Can you provide that service that he's looking for? Uh, do, do they have a valid website? Do they have a valid email address? Are they using their Gmail email address? Uh, based on that, you'll have a lead flow for your salesperson. So I get this lead and I, for example, it's not a valuable lead. So I go, okay, so I just set, shoot this email that's already templated for me to for maximum effect. So I know what to do. I'll forward this email and this all can be automated as well in the in the long run, but they would pass this on. Okay, so then you get a valuable lead. They have a call, pro they have to call the prospect. Uh, I make sure you have a call script enabled for this. So you need to define a process of actions for each solution. It doesn't need to be overly complicated, but it will help you find a rhythm and it'll help you every single one of your salespeople deliver the same results rather than have sporadic results across the team. You, you will always know what to do and you'll never be stuck on a decision making with a prospect. This obviously doesn't come in, uh, instantly. This is developed over time as you work in it and you prove it and you build on it. Um, Okay, so we move on to the next slide. So I'll give you an example. So for example, it wasn't a valuable lead for you. Okay, so I'm, I'm as a salesperson, okay, this wasn't a valuable lead. I checked out the criteria and I ranked it as not valuable prospect, right? So I, I shoot him a, a templated email. Be, we'll call it email one, for example. You have a pre-written subject line that all your team will use across the board, especially when you scale. This is very... It's good to maintain the company standard and also that you track this. So, so for example, John, thanks for reaching out. Hi, first name, obviously insert the first name. I'm a sales executive here, your company name, and I'd be happy to talk to you about your service, about our services. You've mentioned that you're looking for, insert the requirements that it would have filled in within the website form. Can we schedule a quick call to show you how we can help solve your problem? It will help. It will give you a good insight into how our company can deliver for your business. Are you available? Pick a date. Always pick a date for your templated emails. Uh, don't give them an option to to pick, to to decide this. Uh, people like when people are assertive on this. Um, so this is a, a sample email. This doesn't have to apply to everybody. But when you write this out, and I can tweak this down the line, and I can see that this is not getting the open rate or response rate it should. Let's tweak it a little bit, and we'll send out a second draft of this. Okay, so that's getting the, you know, a five percent better response rate than the last one. We know that it's doing better. And if it's getting a worse response rate, we just go back to the old template and work from scratch again. Um, so it's important to always personalize the subject and template with information that you have. Now, for example, you don't have their requirements, you'll have a separate template for one where they did not provide their uh, uh, requirements. So you have one for each situation. It's important to send it in a timely manner, ideally within the hour while the inquiry is still, is still hot. So if I fill in a, a request to something and I wanna talk to someone, I'm obviously interested right now, um, I'm obviously filling in other MSPs' website to check out the, the competition within the area. And if you call me three or four hours later, I might have lost that interest already, or I might have talked to somebody from your competitor. So time is of the essence. The quicker you get to the inquiry, the better. Um, ideally, also sometimes have, if, if you do have resources, is to have two versions of this so you can test this simultaneously for the response rate, open rate and click rate if you want to insert links uh, to some documents, to some pricing. Uh, and what not. Okay, so as mentioned before, it's important to have a reaction to each action. So I just built it out from my previous process that I had. Ali comes in, email prospect. Did he respond? No. Send follow-up email two days later. 
So I have a task to do in two days, send follow-up email, and this is also scripted. Uh, so I know exactly what to do in two days' time if this prospect did not respond. If he did respond, I continue the conversation. Uh, and if I call the prospect, he answered his phone, I continue the conversation. If he didn't answer his phone, I can go back to the loop and send the, the email introduction if needed. So this is how it can work so that as a salesperson at an MSP, I know exactly at any situation what to do. Uh, if I'm a new hired, if you hire someone new as well into the team, they don't need a long uh, learning curve for this. They'll be just as optimized and just as effective as your most senior salesperson within that team because they're all following the same procedure. You know, this can expand for weeks and it can go on to a follow-up process of 14 days or 31 days. Uh, it can have a situation, any sort of situation, but it's important to think of these situations prior to that so that you can, uh, um, so that you're prepared and your team is prepared to, to deal with these scenarios because not always does a prospect respond to the first email or a second email. It might be day 21 that he answers and he's interested of all of a sudden, depending on what kind of content you send him. Uh, based on that. So sometimes it does take a few uh, a few attempts before you can get a grip of them or get a reaction. Sometimes they go cold and they don't answer anymore after having a conversation. Uh, you learn from that and you do a follow-up process that enables them to follow up or at least get a reason as to why they're not interested. Always have that within the process as well. You want to find out where you're making mistakes as well so that you can improve that down the line. Okay, this is a... Always follow up in time. So this is an example. I sent the first email template. I sent that. I, I got no response in two days. So what would I do now normally? I don't do. I send them a generic email. I call them. Okay. So based on the playbook that you've developed for your team, uh, on day two, I send the follow up email and I have this scheduled for me to do so. Here's another template that I can simply do. So, so all I'm doing with this one, what you want to do is you don't want to start a new thread is what you want to do is reply directly to the last thread. So all the conversation is within one ball, right? So you have high first name, just checking up on the below. Are you free next early next week for a quick 20 minute call converse, 20 minute conversation? It's very to the point. What we find works with a lot of MSBs, especially the ones we've worked with in the past uh, to help them, generate more revenue is quicker the better the smaller the better with this you want to get to the point you don't want to be dragging on three four paragraphs people lose interest when you say when you get an email with three four paragraphs telling them oh you know service this service that uh you don't read it you just immediately assume it's just a waste of your time so you want to get straight to the point and schedule some kind of a call with this prospect uh it, it leaves them an easy reply to just say yes, okay, I'm available, or I'm not, I'm not interested. Uh, so keep it short. Don't don't be needy. Don't put blame on them for not answering the last emails. Uh, there's no guilt. Some prospects, for example, feel guilt uh, if they've not replied to you a couple of times, especially if you mention the fact. Sorry, I'm not getting an answer out of you. Can you please reply? Uh, people feel guilty, and they're not more likely not to answer you because they just feel bad about it. So you in any kind of circumstance, you want to feel make them feel bad about the situation. Uh, keep it fresh and happy at all times. Uh, and the last little trick here is the, the send from an iPhone. Even if you're not sending this from an iPhone, you can insert this little text saying, look, I'm, it's just I'm on the go and I've sent this on an iPhone. Uh, I'm busy also and I have things to do as well. So uh, a mutual attraction there. Okay. Likewise, you can have the same for phone scripts. Now, I'm not saying that you need to have a whole script written out like a robot of what you're having a conversation. Obviously you need to be a human and talk to these people and uh, mind what they're saying and listen to them and change the conversation based on their responses. But it is good to go in with a, a things, what you should say just in case you're stuck or kind of a backbone or to stick to just so that you get these answers to help you sell to this prospect. So, as I said, they don't need to be word for word scripts, script the conversations, but you, you do need a structure <laughs> because the structure helps shape the conversation to the directions you want to take it to. So before the call, and I see a lot of this is people, especially small MSPs, they don't, 
they don't take time to learn about the the prospect who just filled in your contact information. They just immediately pick up the phone and call the prospect out of the blue and just try and find out there and then. But that's not being prepared for the conversation. You don't know who you're dealing with. Um, you don't know if this guy, you know, likes Ferraris or Lamborghinis or, uh, if, for example, I keep using this uh, car sales person as a reference. But if you know what this guy's into, for example, you know he's into red cars or he's into blue cars. Uh, you can shape that conversation. You can relate to this guy a lot easier. So read the information they filled in and the requirements they filled into the website. Educate yourself on their needs. Open their website. Learn about their business. You know, it takes two minutes. Open their website. See what they're doing currently. What kind of industry they're in. See if you have any similar customers you can bring up in a conversation. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, you have a prospect, for example, in, in the banking sector. So you call him up, you're having a conversation, but you already know that he's in the banking sector. So you prepared a little monologue about that. So, oh, you know, we have a customer like you, as I was actually speaking to him last week. He's also from the banking uh, industry. And he was saying, you know, guys, you guys are such a, a, a blessing or, or whatnot. So you have a little example of your prospect conversation you had before with him. Uh, do a search on LinkedIn and learn about the employee looking for the service. Who's this guy looking at your service? Uh, what job title is he? What's he currently doing? What's his description in, uh, within the company? You know, what's his current duties within the, in the company? Is he a fit? Is he, um, what, what message do you need to convey to con convince this individual? Uh, and also call shortly after the lead comes in. The quicker, the better. It shows good service. If I if it takes me a day to reply to you, what kind of service am I expecting if I sign up with you? Also, I might have lost interest as well within talking to you. Okay? To start with. So you, you, you've educated yourself on the prospect. You know you know things about their business. You know things about their the person that requested the information. You need a short... 20 second elevator pitch that your team needs to utilize. Now this could be drafted and changed, but so that you welcome yourself. This is me. And this is how I start the conversation to demonstrate the business in a positive light. Now that elevator pitch can be shaped to blend into numerous industries, numerous services that you're offering, but it's good to have for your entire sales organization. Questions to ask. So these don't need to be in order. Uh, but it's always good to have a list of questions to help you identify uh, what service they're looking for, how you can help them, what problems they're having, and how you can solve that problem so that you can relate to the prospect a lot better. You know, they don't need to be in order. They can be across the conversation because conversations go different directions. But this will help you build a profile and find their needs so that you can tailor your service and tailor your messaging going forward to them. During the call, yeah, and it's crucial to take notes and save them in your CRM so that in the future, if you're, again, having a conversation with that prospect or you're emailing them, that you relate to their pain points they discussed with you and to their IT environment that you're going to be looking after. Uh, make sure to listen and let the prospect talk. Don't take over the conversation because you'll find out more information from them. Everybody loves to talk. So um, the more information you get from them, the more of a tool set you have to convert them. So what's next after you have the conversation? Log this call activity along with all the notes into your CRM so you always have that data about the prospect. Set up a follow-up task. There's always a follow-up task. Um, even if they say they're not currently interested, you'll set up a follow-up task for within two months. Or if they say they want to know more information about this or they want to talk about a certain point or uh, they want you to tell them how you're going to be managing their IT environment. So this is this is always crucial to have a follow-up test. There's always something to be done afterwards. There's, there's a thing about people just giving up within the first email. Um, 
people tend to give up. Oh, this prospect is not responding to me. He must not be interested. But sometimes you'll find out that it actually is a sixth or seventh email by the time they respond. And you actually do manage to convert that prospect. I know it, it's a bit of an ego damage or, you know, you don't want to keep chase harassing them. But a, a subtle, gentle follow-up once in a while will get you to that conversation with some of these cases. Uh, a lot of people just give up immediately. But as I mentioned before, uh, in our case, in the MSPs that we've dealt with, uh, you could be talking four to fifth email uh, when they finally decide to come back and regain their interest in the service you're offering. According to research, as many as 50% of sales goes to the sales rep who responds first. So again, as I mentioned before, it's important to hit them on time with the right message so that they know you can provide a good service and also while their interest is red hot. Um, because if you, for example, you're looking for a holiday destination, you're looking for, a, and you're going to Hawaii, <clears throat> and you've inquired about a number of hotels, and one hotel gets back to you within the hour, has a conversation, solves your problem, and you book with that hotel. The second hotel calls you the next day, is like, sorry, you're busy, and you're off the market, you're no longer interested in that service. That's how quick and volatile this business can be. Timing is everything. I'm going to get into why it works uh, and why we found it as success and why other MSPs are finding this a success. As your business grows, your sales teams will grow with it. Once that happens, you will have a team of sales pe people doing what they feel is best. So you'll have, for example, Joe doing his own approach and Michael is doing his own approach. Everybody's doing what they want to do in terms of selling. Uh, that's not necessarily correct because you'll have for example joe doing better than five other sales reps and you're like okay well joe is just better well obviously joe is doing some specific that is better than the rest so why can't we take what joe is doing and educate the other four so they're all on the same level uh we have sales people who are obviously more naturally talented than others but doesn't mean other sales people can't reach their level if they had the same script and information as the other person. They'll be in and around the same conversion rate. You'll see a flatline conversion rate across the whole sales team. Um, uh, within, even within, I'm going to reference our organization, we have maybe 20 odd salespeople within the organization and all of them, they're even brand new salespeople coming in, they're hitting the same conversion rate as prior to before when we were smaller and more flexible. You know, you had ups and downs, you have better salespeople. By, <clears throat> learning from our best salespeople and learning from our prospects, we're able to push that across the entire organization. Uh, a mixed conversion rate from different salespeople. What do we learn from that? We don't learn anything when people are converting it. We don't know where they're going wrong. Where did Michael go wrong in his process? We're not quite sure how to help him because not everybody's following the same structure and we can't learn from where they're going wrong. So. What does the new salesperson do when they join? How do you train them? You know, what process didn't know about the industry? Didn't know about the service? Didn't know how to best converse, convert your potential prospects that you've been dealing for a long time? You have all this information. Why not put this down in a process where this new person can take it up and be up uh, and reaching the same conversion as the other people? And if your top sales rep has much better conversion, why not implement that process across the board? Everyone should be on the same level uh, in this data-driven world. We, there's no reason why we can't track every single communication and and teach people how to communicate that particular way to hit that particular number. Um, if you can replicate success, you should. There's no why reason all salespeople can't perform on the same level. No, no matter how big or small you should be doing this, it's, it's important to learn uh, and not just have a gut feeling as to where you're going wrong. You'll know that, for example, email tree has a really bad response rate. It's not resonating with people. Let's tweak email tree. By tweaking email tree, you've just improved your conversion rate by, say, 2%. Now, that's 2 extra percent that you're going to be converting across the board. 2%, for example, of, of 100 leads per month, that's an extra two accounts you've just converted. Now there's obviously tools. There's a number of tools to make your life a lot easier. There's two sales tools to make your tracking easy, to automate your emails uh, so that you can A-B test, you can tweak and measure against previous emails. All these, the software, you don't, you don't need the software to begin with. You can just 
uh, review manually, but it does help to have analytical software in place so that you can run a report and say, okay, since we introduced the email seven or call script five into the mix, our conversion dropped 4%. Okay, we need to revert back to the old system of having the old call script on day seven. Uh, or if it goes better, we know because, oh, look, because our uh, reply rate to email six was a lot better. Uh, so that's the differentiator. Now, these tools are all available. There's some of them that are free. Uh, Again, they help you track and analyze your performance. You don't need to review this or change things every week. It can be done on a quarterly basis or a monthly basis where you just take a, take a day or two to review your sales cycle and review a sales process and see how you can improve it. And then track again for the next month, change, tweak, and repeat until you perfect and have a perfect uh, sales process for your entire, entire organization. Start seeing results. Um, okay, so we're finished. You know, it's obviously a lot more into the sales process and it does take a lot of time to, to go over it. So I tried to keep it as brief as possible uh, just to give you an overview to get started and try to start thinking about this. It gets a lot more complicated. There's a lot more tools to be used and there's a lot more data to be measured from as well. Uh, we're not going to get it into this session because we are limited on time. But again, you you can reach out to us directly afterwards if you want to have a conversation about this. Okay, so we'll get into the lead generation. I know a lot of lead. So why I talked about the sales process prior to lead generation, because it's important to have a good sales process in place so that you don't waste leads. You know, you're going to be forking out money for marketing campaigns and generating traffic to your website and bring inquiries in for your service. Uh, but if you don't have an effective sales process in place, you're just squandering your hard spent money uh, on wasted leads. So it's good to have a tight sales process in place prior to spending uh, money on marketing so that you don't waste budget and you don't waste money and you don't waste marketing campaigns uh, on leads that you're failing to convert for, for silly reasons. Um, So I'm going to quickly go over some of the key things that can help you get off the ground quite quickly. And I see a lot of mistakes, a lot of MSPs that, that I work with uh, across the board. So I'm going to talk about building a reputation online in this digital, digital age. It's, I don't know why everybody does not have a reputation online. When, I'll get into the repu what reputation means, but uh, website is a big issue with a lot of MSPs. Um, AdWords is a quick access. I know SEO takes some time to be ranked. So, I mean, quick quick answer is always an effective AdWords campaign that's tracked and measured. Uh, retargeting, which is closing the loop. SEO tracking, make sure you're tracking every single campaign. So if I know I spent 5,000 on a campaign A, I know how much money I generated from that campaign. And I know if it's effective. I should know if it's effective or not. I know exactly, I should know exactly every single dollar I've generated from that particular campaign. Uh, and what my return on investment was from that. And if I don't, I'm not doing my job very, uh, my job correctly. Uh, an outbound, uh, an automated outbound, not just the old classic of the outbound, but we'll get into the automated outbound systems. So the marketing backbone to any product, any service, any organization is your reputation. Um, and I'll give you an example. When you go on eBay and you look, for example, for a, a new camera and you see a number of vendors providing selling cameras on eBay, one has no reviews and one has 20, 30 reviews, all quite positive. Which vendor are you going to go with or which service provider are you going to go with? Are you going to go with the one that has no reputation, no reviews from their customers? Or are you going to go with a person or a company that has reviews from, from their customers, uh, verifying them as a legitimate good business? Um, it, it's, it's common all over the board um, of anything you do. Uh, when you eat at a restaurant, you check the reviews. When you book a hotel, you check the reviews. And it shouldn't be any different for MSPs because the same principle applies. I'm looking for somebody to manage my IT environment. I want to see some 
solid reviews about that company. It'll make me feel a lot better by talking to you. It'll make me contact you uh, more so than you not having a, a good review base online. And it, it's not hard to get. And a lot of MSBs don't have reviews and they don't have a reputation uh, on the digital space. And it's they're missing out, missing out on this quite heavily, which is great for you guys to get started with because uh, you'll be ahead of the curve on that. Um, so just clarifying, how do you decide when you need to buy a service resolution, what MSB to choose? Uh, I'll make my decision based on what I see online and what other people are saying. Clients need validation at times. They're not always going to trust you saying you're brilliant or you're going to offer them an out of this world service. They want to know that similar people in their situation have got your service and are very happy about it. It's just going to make their life a bit easier and it's going to make them trust you a lot more. Um, for example, if I tell you how much of a great baseball player I am. I, I go. To, I meet you at a party, and I'm like, you know, I'm a fantastic baseball player. I could have been a pro. You know, I this guy. Why should, why should I trust a stranger? Uh, or if I'm there and something comes up, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy was a phenomenal baseball player in college. Edgar. Yeah. Yeah. We're having some problems with your your audio. Do you want to um? Go sure, ahead and sure. see if we can. Yeah. Do you think you can call back in? Yeah, yeah, no problem. No problem. Okay, great. So sorry about that, everybody. We're going to have him call back in because it was getting uh, really staticky and probably very hard to hear. Um, we thank you for joining us today. Um, we'll send you an email when the replay is available. And uh, you can take a, a listen or pass it on to to someone else. Um, so I'm just trying to dance here for a minute while Edgar gets back on the call. We appreciate your patience. If you have any questions for Edgar, this would be a good time to put them in the Ask a Question Hello? box. Oh, there you go. That's much better. Is that better? Sorry about oh, that. Oh, yeah. That's great. <laughs> Talking about great. digital okay. space and my microphone has failed. Or the <laughs> software you're using, so. Oh, no. Um, okay. Uh, is this a lot better? Yeah. Yeah, you can go ahead now. <laughs> Someone made a funny comment. There goes his reputation. <laughs> 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 is okay. Um, so we're back to the reputation building. Uh, clients need validation. Build reviews online to gain, gain credibility within the community. Uh, it's it's a really open open space to do that because as a lot of your competitors are not doing it, um, they're missing out. Um, so I'm going to talk about how you can do this very easily and very straightforward. Um, quick example tool. Which one are you going to trust? You're going to trust the one with reviews. Um, so here's an example of an MSP with reviews, and those and those are quite hard to find. Um, and it's not hard to, to get reviews. It could be either on Google or Yelp or any other area of service that your business features in. So when someone's, Google especially ranks reviews. If your business has reviews on, on the Google site, it's going to rank you higher, and it's going to show up under your website. So you're going to immediately see your business has well, five stars, four stars, um, and it's a lot more accessible than the, the other websites showing up on this as well. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward to do so as well. Uh, you can buy a tool to do this. You can buy a, a tool to insert, or you can even have a template for this as well. That after you provide a service, send a link to your client where could, they can add a review to your business. So after you have a conversation and you solve some sort of a problem for them, just go, hey, you know, I was gl glad to help you today. You know, just if you have a minute, could you please? Uh, leave a review behind for our business. We'd really appreciate it. And I'll show you the template for this. Um, it's very straightforward. You want to do this specifically after you've just solved their problem. So the, they're, they're happy right now. They're willing to give you a really nice, uh, some really nice feedback about your business. Uh, it doesn't need to be out of the blue where you're just asking randomly, oh, you know, uh, can you please, you don't know if they're happy, if they're not happy. 
Um, so after you provided a service and you presumably did a good job, you send them this template uh, with a link to review your business. Uh, <clears throat> Or again, if you want to automate this, you can insert a link automatically after you. So if you have a ticketing system, and within your ticketing system, you can have a signature. So every time, or a feedback loop, depending what PSA you're using, what ticketing software you're using, uh, within that tool, you can have, after a ticket is closed, and for example, they've rated your ticket closed as four stars or five stars, at the end says, thank you uh, for enjoying the service. Please leave a review on here. Uh, it only take you two minutes. Now you cannot every time a ticket is closed and they're happy with the ticket, that can be automatically going out to them, depending on the PSA solution you're using. Um, some some have that built in. You can get plugins for that as well. Da -da. So here's a quick template that can go in that you can just get started right now. You don't need to. At a later stage, you can find a tool that you can implement into your PSA or ticketing system to do this automatically. Um, so here's an example. You have an open conversation or an open ticket, say, and they just said, thanks for resolving that. Uh, or you say, we've just resolved that for you, and they say, thanks, it's working great now. Uh, you know, hi, John, or hi, Jim. I'm happy that we could help. Our team would really appreciate if you could leave a review about, our exper about your experience with our business here, insert link. It should, it should only take you about two, three minutes to complete. Thanks in advance. You're thanking them in advance, they're more likely to do it at this stage because you just help them out and they feel like they owe you a little bit. Um, this is the optimal time for that. Um, so this is on the having the reputation. It's very straightforward, it's very easy to do and you do it at an optimal time when they're more likely to help you out because you've just helped them out. So the next thing is that that I think is very important. A lot of MSPs lack is a just just a solid website. Um and I'll tell you why. You would be surprised as to how many MSPs I find with just the worst uh worst websites. I've ever seen in my life. Um, and there's just no, absolutely no reason to have this in this day and age, especially if you're offering IT services to prospects. Uh, if So a website is your business card. It gives you your business credibility. Um, if I see a dodgy site, I'm not going to trust the business. Or if you, like, you're providing an IT service to these people, uh, the least you can do is build a feasible website for them to say, wow, these guys know IT. They seem to know their stuff. Um, mobile friendly for Google ranking and optimization uh, by template. It's quick and it's cost effective. Uh, 30 bucks and you can have something in place. Develop the content, three, four pages from an ICTA. It's very straightforward. Uh, develop those keywords to get ranked in SEO for your specific region and you're good to go. And it doesn't take a lot of time. You can, you can get up, I can build, you can build a website within an hour or two. Uh, you have an open running and live within that time. Uh, there's a number of web uh, template website services that you can go to. Find the one that you think is nice. Make sure it's um, optimized. Uh, it's 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 not an old template. It's a it's a new template released this year because they're completely optimized for Google, specifically for 2018. So you want to work off a a fresher template, ideally than. Uh, an old template. So here I'll give you an example. Then what's crucial within your website is to always have a CTA. CTA is a call to action. What do you, if, if I as a prospect come to your website, I'm looking for uh, managed services within the uh, New York district that come to your website. What do you, what is it that you want me to do on your website? Obviously you want me to talk to you. You want me to fill in some sort of a form so that I can have a conversation with you about this. And a ha a having a clear CTA visible across your entire website is the way to do it. Uh, now, I've mentioned before about changing blue to green and green to red uh, to optimize the performance of that CTA. Uh, even something like get started over contact us or can can change results. Just having simple words because people feel at ease uh, clicking something they, they don't feel pressured into doing that doesn't have any sort of commitment. So speak to us, have a conversation with us or... 
some kind of nice uh, nice lingo that people do not get pushed off on. And make sure it's on every page and it can scroll with you at all times so that at all times they can uh, fill in that form for you. Now, this is important because you're going to be spending money driving people to your website. And if your app website is not optimized, you're not going to be converting at a high rate. Uh, we'll get into the details of that in a second. So what I mean by that is like if, if you're spending 10 grand of marketing every month to generate tools, say 1,000 visits, and you're only converting 2% of those into inquiries, that means you know your website's not doing its job. By tweaking it and having a modern interface and messaging that relates with a clear CTA, can increase it by two, three percent, four, five percent, depending how well of a, an execution job you do, based on the data you have. Um, so here's the CTA example. You have a clear CTA everywhere present. You want something to, to be done on your website. You don't want just people to look around and do nothing on your site. I'm giving again just an example of what we're working off. Um, so this is some clear CTAs visible across the whole page and across every page. Okay, now, how do you improve on, so you have a good website, but how do you keep on improving? How do you convert your traffic better? Uh, there's tools for that, there's simple tools for that. Um, Hotjar, for example, as you can see, I, you can monitor exactly what somebody did on your site. You can see where they moved their mouse, what page they went to, there's a recording of this. It's a live recording of their whole session on your website from start to finish. Uh, sometimes you find maybe they started filling in a form. I can see there, and they could have dropped off on the sixth field. And you see this commonly, for example, they drop off on a sixth field of your form. It means your form might be too long and you're asking too many questions and people are getting bored. So by analyzing that data, saying, look, everybody's dropping off on our form uh, on a sixth, sixth question. Let's decrease the questions and condense, condense into five questions. And all of a sudden, you're seeing a lot more people inquire about your service. Small tweaks like that. Uh, people are leaving the homepage because they're confused. So this tools like that show you exactly what somebody does, what your prospect does on that website. So you can improve um, your, your layout. You can improve your messaging. You can improve your buttons. You can improve your menu. Uh, all this can be improved by analyzing this data. And it's, this data is incredible. Uh, and I'll get into this in a second. Um, a heat map of your website, right? People are not scrolling down to your content. So you want to keep your main content above, above the line. Uh, you want to convince someone within almost two lines if, if they should be interested or not. Uh, you clear CTA so that you know where they're, looking around within within your website. Okay, so here's a quick heat map, for example, uh, so that I know, like I can condense it to say uh, 20,000 people have been on our site and this is where they're looking at, this is where their mouse hovers. Uh, I use this data from our dev server basically so that only the internal stuff, so. Um, Here's the optimization, right? So we get into the conversation about this. So using tracking tools like Hotjar, we can see behavior from our website and improve performance on that data. Uh, if we don't know what people are doing on our websites, uh, we don't know where to improve. And we don't know how to convert that better. Uh, so uh, here's the example I want to give you. And here's why it's important to always analyze data, not only in your sales process, but the funnel is, uh, cam campaign optimization, website optimization, and then the sales optimization within this. So learn from our website visitors. Like they're telling us that they're not interested in this content or they're getting lost here or they're, we're losing them on a, a field that they don't want to fill in. Uh, where do we lose them? So we can identify where we lose our visitors and then we can solve that problem so that we don't lose that segment of visitors. Do we lose them halfway through the form? How, how can we improve the, to convert more web, website visitors? So, so let's say you have 500 website visitors per month. You have a conversion rate on the website of 2%. So what by conversion the website, I mean is 2% of all the visitors, which is a standard thing, uh, fill in a form, all right? Doesn't seem like a lot. So you get 10 contact requests a month, okay? 
So by making small tweaks, you can improve that by say 4%. Now you're getting three times the leads with the same traffic and the same campaigns. By making small tweaks like changing your text or changing your layout or adding a CTA or improving your contact form to make it more accessible for users. Maybe they can fill in their information with LinkedIn. Maybe they can, uh, you can speed up that process for them. Maybe you should give more information on the, oh, the first fold of the website. Again, all those tweaks and analyzing the behavior afterwards, you can improve that and generate more money with the same amount of traffic, with the same amount of campaigns, and generate a lot more leads by making those small changes. Um, I, 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 I've told you this before, but even things like changing the color of your button or changing the format of your homepage, you know, that, that can yield a click-through rate, um, changing the content of your button, change to removing a field, all these things can impact your business. And especially larger scale, you start seeing these small tweaks really heap the benefits out of this. So this is the optimization of the website. So we're always tracking, we always know what people are doing because this is where people are landing when you're using things like AdWords. You drive them to your website. You don't wanna waste your AdWords budget by for them not to convert in your website, okay? So optimize your website prior to uh, prior to kicking off any sort of marketing campaigns that we're gonna discuss here. Um, so we're going a little over time, I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Uh, AdWords lead generation, when AdWords is utilized the right way, it can generate good flow of leads. Here's two key campaigns that you and a lot of MSBs that I've worked with can do quite easily. Um, Keyword-based campaign in your region and competitor campaign. So say you're based in New York, you offer your service and the term that the person uses to look for your service and you base that. So you, you don't need to be ranked on the first page. You'll just show up on the first page using AdWords. So always target specific area serving and specific keywords. Don't do a broad keyword match. Do a specific keyword match because you don't want to waste your budget on that. And competitor campaigns. If you have some competitors online, use their name, use their brand and target those keywords. So you have a company that's a competitor called John's Limited. So you target John's Limited in New York. So anytime someone searches John's Limited, they'll see your ad saying, I offer a better service, call me instead. Here's an example uh, of managed service provider in New York. So quick call to action, description of what they do. They offer an offer of three months free, um, success stories in IT consulting. So it's and here's an example of a competitor campaign. So, and the same company we looked at before, Data Prize, somebody's targeting saying, look, I do a service as well, go to me instead. Uh, and it's a quick way to take your competition's lead source. Um, so basics, you can create a free account, there's free courses you can also do online, or if you need a consultancy, you can always get educated on that. You can take a quick course or work with somebody uh, for this. Uh, create a free account, target keywords to services you offer, do some research, uh, what's trending in your area for that keyword. Uh, there's tools for that, which is Google Trends, A-B test messages. Uh, within the AdWords, you can have three, four different messages, so you can see what's working. So if you have a competitor campaign, if you say something like, oh, we are better, here's why, look what our customers have to say. Or if you have another campaign, go and say another message saying, uh, our service is 30% the price. So you know you have two offers. One is that we're cheaper, one is that we're better. And you can mark, see which AdWords is generate more, uh, more revenue for you or more results for you. Set a daily budget, have a great landing page with clear call to action. So make sure you have a great landing page with customer testimonials. Uh, that's specific to that campaign ideally. So each campaign should almost have a unique landing page, but it's, it's quite hard to do. So it's, sometimes you can have a broad one. Um, and make sure there's a form on that page for someone to fill in immediately on that page without having to go. Sometimes you can always as well hide the menu so they don't get distracted and they, they're focused on filling in that uh, contact form. Uh, it's a good source of leads. It can drive really good traffic. Um, and really good conversion at a cheap price, especially if you utilize it the right way, you can really make it work for you. It takes time, it takes tweaking, it takes analyzing the data, but it can be a good source of leads, a good conversion for you. If you do have a base of a good landing page, of a good sales process, that could be a good revenue stream for you, targeting your competitors and targeting your keywords in your area. 
Um, retargeting and remarketing. So after we've just done, we're driving traffic, somebody landed on your landing page, but they did not fill in the form. So what do you do with that prospect? The, your normal answer would be nothing. I do nothing. They've lost, lost that person from the campaign. They didn't fill in the form. That's not true. There's, a, there's simple tools out there that can make it easy for you. So you can close the loop. So what it does is if I land on your page and I did not fill in the form and I can set that rule, that for the next three weeks, I'll follow you around with a message saying, talk to us. You might have seen these around when you go book a hotel, but you didn't quite book the hotel and that ad follows you around uh, Facebook. It follows you around your searches, your websites you visit. It's an effective tool because you, you're constantly reminded of that brand saying, right, what the hell, why the hell not? I'll go and have a conversation with them. Uh, and you could be on Forbes as well for them. So that it makes them seem like you're a big brand. Targeting and converting new clients. Uh, your brand ad follows users who visited your site, segment visitors. Um, how it works is pretty straightforward. Um, someone visits your site, but leaves without completing your desired action, which is purchasing or signing up or a call to action. Later, well, on any device, they get targeted with your ads until they come back in and fill in your form and have a conversation with you so that your brand is always in their eye. Uh, this could always also work if you want to upsell something to your existing customers, but that's a little bit more complicated and it's down the line. Um, here's an example of how it looks. Your brand will come up here. Let's have a conversation. You're offering their service to them on all the sites they're currently visiting. And a lot of MSPs are not using this uh, tool which is a great way to bring your leads back that you've just wasted from your campaign from them not converting. It just closes that loop. It's very cost effective. It's not expensive, self-sufficient. So once you set it up, you don't have to maintain it. Uh, you serve those ads and you target the people. So the product, for example, here is called AdRoll and offers even design services to design ads free of charge for you. Um, some data that you get with it. Uh, people that come back into it. I'm going to run trick quickly through the last slides as we're running out of time and leave some time for Q&A. So SEO, um, SEO is important, but it does take time. AdWords is immediate. It costs money, but it's immediate and you can yield results right away. AdWords is something you think in the long term because it's not going to show up for the next six months probably. Um, so check out Google Trends. You see what people are searching uh, and you, what you want to do is each website page should have one item to focus on. So watch each page in your website should have a specific keyword you focus on. Uh, 60 terms max uh, mentions page description in the title. So this is whoever does your website. This, and if you buy a template, that's all structured for you. So it's very easy to do. You don't need to code anything. Um, automated outbound, quickly go over this. No manual process. So, Outbound is people normally think is just calling prospects. You have a list and you just call them. So there's tools, software for automating your outbound. So you don't need to prospect. You build a list out of a specific tool and you automate your messages that just fire off every week to them. Uh, and they seem like natural human interaction. So that your sales team is now wasting time on outbound and it's, it's doing its job behind the scenes for you while the other campaigns are running as well. If you have a limited sales team, new business staff, this is a great to utilize automated outreach campaigns. Uh, they'll automatically give you a list of prospects within your region and your salespeople automatically in the background shoot emails. That will stop if they respond and then your salespeople can take over from there. Uh, tracking. This is crucial. There's no point investing in marketing if you can't track the results. Add cookies or tracking codes to your campaigns. Uh, you can use Google campaigns, analytics. It's very straightforward. Unique landing pages and tracking where that source is coming from so that you know if i spend 10k i need to know how much money i made from that but if i spend 10k on a specific adwords campaign i need to know how much money that brought me back otherwise why am i spending more money into it unless i have results to show for it and in this day and age there's no reason not to do that uh okay so sorry i had to rush through the end so thank you and if you have any questions feel free to type them up uh you can always contact me directly. Here's my email below or target our marketing at poster.com or our visit our website to check out more. We have some blogs about this uh, that you could read more about. Thank you. Great. Thank you. That was a wealth of information. Thank you so much.
We do have a couple questions, and let's, uh, let's jump right in. Why is a process-driven sales method better than the natural method, and does it come across as robotic? Uh, so we get, uh, I get asked that a lot. So does it actually come off as robotic? Uh, can, you know, because you have a script and it sounds that you're just reading off something. No, it doesn't need to be. It's just it needs to be practiced, especially the phone script. It doesn't. You just prepared. You go into a meeting. It's like going into a meeting not prepared or not having a presentation in place or not doing your research. It's it's just preparation that sets you apart. Um, at all times, your sales team is prepared for this. Okay, I have another question. Um... You may have covered it, uh, but they're asking about, is there a reputation tool? Yeah, so a lot of your CRM software or um, or PSA software should have this built in, or you can get a plugin built into this. Um, uh, so like Zendesk, for example, for taking a customer thermometer that integrates with, you know, Autotask or PSA or BMS or connect wise um that that afterwards can leave a a note to go and leave a review for your service you just need to find where you want to be reviewed you want to be reviewed on yelp oh you can mix it up you can the more places you're reviewed uh the better it is uh for your reputation okay very good yeah if you have any more questions please uh submit them we just have one more left but we're happy to take a few more and that is um should we get a digital marketing agency or do mar or or should we do our marketing in house um I always say it's always do better in house you might not have resource, but if you hire someone in house they will learn your business like an agency has never uh will never be able to do um I've worked in an agency and I've managed four or five customers simultaneously, and you can never dedicate your time to learn about a specific business directly. Um, you're always sort of in the know because you're managing four or five clients at the same time. Uh, if you have someone in-house, they can learn ins and out out of your uh, your processes, your customer profile, your campaigns, and they can invest more time into it. Okay. Very nice. Uh, that's all we have in terms of questions. I didn't know, Edgar, Edgar if you wanted to take a minute and just – um, say one uh, one last word or if you wanted me to just close it out. Yeah, so thanks everyone for joining. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, talking to everyone here. It was nice to see such a nice number as well. Um, so feel free to check out our website or email marketingapostle.com if you had some questions about the presentation. Um, and again, thanks for joining and have a nice day or evening depending where you're from. <laughs> All right, thank you. And really, we really appreciate your time. And like I said, there's a lot of uh, information packed into the webcast, so we appreciate that. I'd like to thank the audience for attending. The webcast was sponsored by Pulseway and presented by Redmond Channel Partner. Thanks again, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>